Novice Broadcast Crew, Week 2, 2021. Here's what's on the agenda for this week. Your flat lay self-portraits, broadcast basics training, our assignment, and this week's to-do. So let's get started. First, your flat lay self-portraits. Great work, Novice Crew. Thank you for putting so much time and creativity into this first assignment. This week we'll begin our Broadcast Basics training, the fundamentals of developing sound, engaging, and captivating broadcast content. While the following techniques have been developed for broadcast at the high school level, they can certainly be applied to any video journalism work you choose to do. Your own vlog, YouTube channel, DIY segment, TikTok content. Let's begin with writing for broadcast. We'll cover the six key elements of writing for broadcast. They are hook, purpose for coverage, key information, soundbite and attribution, transitions, and call to action. Here's an in-depth look into each of these elements and why they matter. Writing is the foundation for your broadcast content and media stories. And while one could just improvise as they go, a thoughtful, well-structured, and carefully written script will bring your final broadcast credibility, clarity, and character. This video will cover the basics of writing for broadcast purposes. Here, we'll break it down into six key parts. In this demonstration, I'll use a variety of examples. In the beginning, examples from more mainstream national news outlets, and later on, some possible school-related examples, all to give you an idea of how to develop your writing for a range of topics. Getting your viewers' attention is arguably one of the most important considerations. Why? Because as journalists, we're competing against narrowing attention spans and a growing breadth of content via social media that can make it really difficult to get our viewers to focus on what we're trying to share. If we don't get their attention in the first few seconds, it's likely they'll move on to other content. The hook is the catchy first sentence or two that should capture their attention and pull them into the rest of your story. Now there's no one tool for the job here, but there are six really common and effective hook approaches you may want to try out. The no-nonsense approach cuts straight to the chase by revealing a series of relevant, in-your-face facts and data and or events. Take this example from 1A. This is 1A. I'm Jen White in Washington. There have been several big victories for Native American rights in the last week. One from the Supreme Court on tribal lands in Oklahoma, another from a federal court on the Dakota Access Pipeline, and then there's the announcement that Washington, D.C.'s football team will change its name. We'll talk about the significance of these changes and what they mean for Native American rights. Here, Jen White front loads her story with big news. Big victories for Native American rights. One from the Supreme Court on tribal lands in Oklahoma. Another from a federal court on the Dakota Access Pipeline. And Washington, D.C.'s football team will change its name. She delivers her first few lines in a no-nonsense way without any frills, getting right to the point of her story. How these big policy changes will be impacting Native American communities and the nation. Sometimes delivering a single, bold statement with gusto can wrangle an audience's attention with authority. Take this example from All Things Considered. The night sky is putting on a show this month. A new comet is whizzing by the Earth, and it should be easily visible for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere. Here, the journalist kicks off this story with a bold statement. Notice how she uses the present continuous tense. This makes it seem to the audience that the news is currently happening and that we are part of it. Also notice her use of personification and strong action verbs like putting on a show and whizzing. Then she localizes the events that can otherwise seem distant and unrelatable by saying it should be easily visible for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere. Asking the question that is on the minds of the masses can effectively pull them into your story. For example, Steve Inskeep begins this episode of Morning Edition by asking, who keeps track of the data that measure the pandemic? This hook technique is really useful because it sets up an effective question-answer format with which to structure the rest of your story. A problem is central to any captivating story. The show How Do We Fix It provides a good example of the big problem hook in the episode Democracy Reform, Voters Not Politicians. The 2020 election is coming and it could be a mess. This episode is the latest in our series on democracy reform and voting. By starting a new story like this, the 2020 election is coming. 
we're given the impression that something big and ominous is looming in the near future. Then by saying, and it could be a mess, the listener is put on their toes by the prospect of this election not going well. Central and far-reaching problems and stories tend to captivate viewers because they generate a desire for resolution to the problem. And it's an effective way to keep your audience engaged. The next technique is to begin with a powerful soundbite or quote associated with the story. For example, Radiolab's July 12th segment entitled The Flag and the Fury begins with a soundbite of a spoken word poet. I pledge to never be passive, patriotic, or grateful in the face of American abuse. This hook approach pulls the viewer into the story by putting them in direct contact with the people who it's about. Ultimately, it's the people in our stories that provide the most worthwhile reasons to tune in. Good news stories, whether they're news or narrative, transport us to another place or time so that we can have new experiences we might not otherwise have. A good example is a recent segment on Consider This. Monday afternoon in a church parking lot on the south side of Macon, Georgia, a line of cars stretched for blocks. Donald Black, who's 74, was in one of those cars. It was a green Honda. He had been there for two hours waiting for a test. This technique involves describing where and when the story happens in such detail that the viewer can imagine themselves there. Notice how in just a few short sentences, Elsa Chang paints a full picture of the whole scene, complete with the who, what, where, when, and why. Now there are many, many more hook styles you can employ, some that perhaps you invent. Remember that the purpose of a hook is to grab the attention of your audience in a meaningful way so that they'll eagerly go along with you into the next part of your story. Once you have the attention of your audience, it's now time to briefly explain why you're covering this specific topic. The purpose for coverage justifies why it's worth their time and attention to tune into your story. The five key criteria you should consider are as follows. It should be informative, relevant, timely or timeless, accurate and coverable. For example, we would not want to start a segment with, Hi, my name's Ivan. Today I'm going to do a segment on peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. This approach can come off as purposeless, self-interested, and detached from the needs of the collective. Instead of the what, focus on the why. Try this. These days, many of you might find yourselves on a shoestring budget, skipping meals due to busy schedules, all while still craving something nutritious. The trusty peanut butter and jelly sandwich is a timeless classic that combines cost-effectiveness, efficiency, and nutrient-packed goodness all in a tasty on-the-go meal. Write your purpose for coverage as if you want your viewer to know that you are thinking about this story from their point of view. Using the second person point of view, you, will help you connect directly with your viewer. Your purpose for coverage affirms for your audience that your content is newsworthy and useful or interesting to them. So, you successfully immerse your audience in your story. Now it's time to get to the substance of your segment. Key information can vary from segment to segment. A news story, for example, may detail the events of a recent incident in order of descending importance. A sports story may focus on the highlights of a recent sports competition. An opinion piece may present a series of conflicting viewpoints. While the nature of the key information may vary from segment to segment, the elements will generally remain the same. The five W's. Look to identify the who, what, where, when, and why for each of your segments. Now we'll go in greater depth and detail about how to develop key information for different types of segments in subsequent videos. It is not enough to just present information without backing it up. Where did you get it? According to who? How do we know? These are all questions that your viewers will be wondering as you present your information. To ensure that your story is credible, make sure to provide sound bites and attribution. A sound bite is simply a recorded interview snippet. An attribution is a reference to the who or where you got your information. For example, let's say I were writing a story on the origin of the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. After providing some interesting facts about the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, I'd include an interview with a culinary expert. In this case, Sandy Sandwichberg. Why did I choose him? Well, because he's directly related to this part of the story and is an authority on the matter. Here's his soundbite. What we now ubiquitously enjoy is the common peanut butter and jelly sandwich actually dates back to the early 1900s and was considered a delicacy. Now to work this in, I would contextualize this soundbite. In a recent interview, Sandy Sandwichberg, chief sandwich officer, commented that, By writing this first, I'm preparing my audience with necessary information so that they'll better understand where this quote is coming from. 
Here's what the soundbite and attribution would sound like together. In a recent interview, Sandy Sandwichberg, chief sandwich officer, commented that What we now ubiquitously enjoy as the common peanut butter and jelly sandwich actually dates back to the early 1900s and was considered a delicacy. One of the elements that separates excellent news stories from mediocre ones is the transition. Transitions act in much the same way shock absorbers do in your car. They smooth the bumps and give you a more fluid ride to where you're going. It keeps your writing connected. So let's say you're producing a people segment that sheds light on a relatively unknown but distinguished member of the school community. You've gathered these pieces of information. Since a young child, Clive has made life-size superheroes out of cardboard boxes. His work is elaborate, intricate, and imaginative. And this. This summer, in fact, he'll be taking his talents to the annual Comic-Con convention to display his cardboard creations in all their glory. We could just present these one right after the other, but it would sound clunky. The ride through your story would feel like riding in a car with no shock absorbers. So let's develop a transition to connect or smooth the way between these two points. Think about where we're coming from and where we're going. In this case, past and future. And Clive has shown us that holding on to our passions from childhood through adolescence can lead to quite a heroic future. Now let's hear this part of our script with the transition. Since a young child, Clive has made life-size superheroes out of cardboard boxes. His work is elaborate, intricate, and imaginative. And Clive has shown us that holding on to our passions from childhood through adolescence can lead to quite a heroic future. This summer, in fact, he'll be taking his talents to the annual Comic-Con convention to display his cardboard creations in all their glory. Now that's a smooth ride. Your script is nearly finished. You're certain your viewer has been hooked, informed, engaged, and brought along for a smoothly transitioned ride. Now it's time to give them something to do. Enter the call to action. Your final element of your story will be to compel your viewer to do something about what they just learned. But what do I do? As broadcasters, we have to give them some options. Make it as immediate and accessible as possible. For example, if you're wrapping up a story about a local community fundraiser, your call to action would aim to get viewers involved. Try this. Interested in supporting this year's cause? Come out this Friday evening for a live virtual fundraising event. Additional donations can be made at the following website. Nice work. In this training, we covered writing basics for broadcast. We learned about the six key parts that you'll want to include in your scripts to make sure your content is engaging, purposeful, smooth, and actionable. Great. Now that we've established the basics of how to write a broadcast story, let's practice writing our first one. Assignment one, writing basics. Choose a topic of interest to you. To help you identify a topic, I've included some examples of segments produced by our very own honors crew. In this set of examples, you'll see a DIY on making homemade face masks by Bliss Productions, a feature on how to stay motivated by Rebecca D., an opinion on opinions about remote learning by No Limit Productions, and a review of the new iOS 14 update by Bliss Productions. Watching these completed videos will give us a sense of how focusing on the six elements of effective broadcast writing will help lead to an effective final video. So for your first assignment, we'll focus on the writing portion. Here are the steps. One, identify a topic of interest. Two, familiarize yourself with the topic. Three, develop a hook. Four, develop a purpose for coverage. Five, identify key information. Six, develop a sentence to introduce an intended soundbite. Seven, develop a transition. And eight, develop a call to action. What are you submitting for this assignment? A video? No. A written script? Yes. Your written script should be approximately one paragraph in length and contain all six of the writing basics elements. This will be a 20 point assignment. So what do we have to do? One, identify a topic. This will be five points. And two, assignment one, writing basics. This will be 20 points. Next week, novices will further develop our media stories by designing, conducting, and integrating interviews. We'll see you in virtual class. In the meantime, stay safe, stay focused, and stay connected.